Good morning, everyone. I have one brief announcement as we gather together to receive divine service today. And that is simply a reminder that sign up for the father-daughter event, uh, the camp out, uh, is the last day to register is today. The last day to register is today. This morning we utilize the liturgy, Divine Service Setting 3. That liturgy begins on page 184. We sing together the opening hymn, hymn 708.
In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Beloved in the Lord, let us draw near with a true heart and confess our sins unto God our Father, beseeching him in the name of our Lord Jesus Christ to grant us forgiveness. Our help is in the name of the Lord. I said I will confess my transgressions unto the Lord. O Almighty God, merciful Father, I, a poor miserable sinner, confess unto you all my sins and iniquities, with which I have ever offended you, and justly deserve your temporal and eternal punishment. But I am heartily sorry for them, and sincerely repent of them, and I pray you of your boundless mercy, and for the sake of the holy, innocent, bitter suffering and death. Of your beloved Son, Jesus Christ, to be gracious and merciful to me, a poor sinful me. Upon this, your confession, I, by virtue of my office as a called and ordained servant of the Word, announce the grace of God unto all of you. And in the stead and by the command of my Lord Jesus Christ, I forgive you all your sins in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Have regard for the covenant, O Lord. Let not the downtrodden turn back in shame. Why does your anger smoke against the sheep of your pasture? Which you have redeemed to be the tribe of your heritage. Remember Mount Zion where you have dwelt. Glory be to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now, and will be forever. Amen. Have regard for the covenant, O Lord. Let not the downtrodden turn back in shame.
The Lord be with you. Let us pray. Almighty and everlasting God, give us an increase of faith, hope, and charity, and that we may obtain what you have promised. Make us love what you have commanded. Through Jesus Christ, your Son, our Lord, who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. The Old Testament reading for the 13th Sunday after Trinity is from 2 Chronicles chapter 28. The men of Israel took captive 200,000 of their relatives, women, sons, and daughters. They also took much spoil from them and brought the spoil to Samaria. But a prophet of the Lord was there, whose name was Oded. And he went out to meet the army that came to Samaria and said to him, Behold, because the Lord, the God of your fathers, was angry with Judah, he gave them into your hand, but you have killed them in a rage that has reached up to heaven. And now you intend to subjugate the people of Judah and Jerusalem, male and female, as your slaves. Have you not sins of your own against the Lord your God? Now hear me, and send back the captives from your relatives whom you have taken, for the fierce wrath, wrath of the Lord is upon you. Certain chiefs also of the men of Ephraim, Azariah the son of Johanan, Berechiah the son of Meshillamah, Jehezekiah the son of Shalom, and Amasa the son of Hadlai, stood up against those who were coming from the war and said to them, You shall not bring the captives in here, for you propose to bring upon us guilt against the Lord, in addition to our present sins and guilt. For our guilt is already great, and there is fierce wrath against Israel. So the armed men left the captives and the spoil before the princes and all the assembly. And the men who have been mentioned by name rose and took the captives. And with the spoil, they clothed all who were naked among them. They clothed them, gave them sandals, provided them with food and drink, and anointed them. And carrying all the feeble among them on donkeys, they brought them to their kinsfolk at Jericho, the city of palm trees. Then they returned to Samaria. This is the word of the Lord. You are the God who works wonders. You have made known your might among the peoples. The epistle is from Galatians chapter 3. To give a human example, brothers, even with a man made covenant, no one annuls it or adds to it once it has been ratified. Now the promises were made to Abraham and to his offspring. It does not say, and to offsprings, referring to many, but referring to one, and to your offspring, who is Christ. This is what I mean. The law which came 430 years afterward does not annul a covenant previously ratified by God so as to make the promise void. For if the inheritance comes by the law, it no longer comes by promise, but God gave it to Abraham by a promise. Why then the law? It was added because of transgressions, until the offspring should come to whom the promise had been made, and it was put in place through angels by an intermediary. Now an intermediary implies more than one, but God is one. Is the law then contrary to the promises of God? Certainly not. For if a law had been given that could give life, then righteousness would indeed be by the law. 
But the scripture imprisoned everything under sin, so that the promise by faith in Jesus Christ might be given to those who believe. This is the word of the Lord. Gospel according to St. Luke, the tenth chapter. Turning to the disciples, Jesus said privately, Blessed are the eyes that see what you see, for I tell you that many prophets and kings desire to see what you see and did not see it, and to hear what you hear and did not hear it. And behold, a lawyer stood up to put him to the test, saying, Teacher, what shall I do to inherit eternal life? He said to him, What is written in the law? How do you read it? And he answered, You shall love the Lord your God with all your heart and with all your soul and with all your strength and with all your mind and your neighbor as yourself. And he said to him, You have answered correctly. Do this, and you will live. But he, desiring to justify himself, said to Jesus, And who is my neighbor? Jesus replied, A man was going down from Jerusalem to Jericho, and he fell among robbers, who stripped him and beat him and departed, leaving him half dead. Now by chance a priest was going down that road, and when he saw him, he passed by on the other side. So likewise a Levite, when he came to the place and saw him, pass by on the other side. But a Samaritan, as he journeyed, came to where he was. And when he saw him, he had compassion. He went to him and bound up his wounds, pouring on oil and wine. Then he set him on his own animal and brought him to an inn and took care of him. And the next day he took out two denarii and gave them to the innkeeper, saying, Take care of him. And whatever more you spend, I will repay you when I come back. Which of these three do you think proved to be a neighbor to the man who fell among the robbers? He said, The one who showed him mercy. And Jesus said to him, You go and do likewise. This is the Gospel of the Lord. Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, and of all things visible and invisible. And in one Lord Jesus Christ, the only begotten Son of God, begotten of his Father before all worlds, God of God, light of light, very God of very God, begotten not made, being of one substance with the Father, by whom all things were made, who is for us men and for our salvation. Spirit of the Virgin Mary, and was made man, and was crucified, and was buried, and was 
Grace to you and peace from God our Father, from our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. Amen. What is the fifth commandment? You shall not murder. What does this mean? We should fear and love God so that we do not hurt or harm our neighbor in his body, but help and support him in every physical need. We will learn today that God is the author of life and that every human life is precious to him. Through his gospel, he freely gives the gift of eternal life. God gave you life from the womb of your mother, and God sustains your life by means of daily bread, food and clothing, shelter. He also protects your life by means of parents, govern, government officials, police officers, and other authorities. But best of all, God sent his only begotten son to be your savior. He redeemed you from sin, death, and the devil. You do not inherit eternal life by what you do or by the law, but you inherit eternal life purely by God's grace through faith in Christ alone. God cares about you and God loves you. And he also cares and loves for your family, your friends, and even your enemies. God wants us to care for and to love other people and to help them in time of need. We just sang, all coldness from my heart remove, my every act, word, thought, be love. But best of all, we see God's love for us in the cross. The cross defines God's love for us, and he also cares for us, again, for giving us food and clothing, shelter and protection. Again, God is the author of life. Every human life is precious to him. Through his gospel, he gives the gift of eternal life. In the beginning, God said, let us make man in our own image. And so God formed Adam out of the dust of the ground and breathed into him the breath of life. Then God made Eve from Adam's rib. Adam and Eve had a perfect love toward God, and they had a perfect love toward each other. But unfortunately, Satan came along and stripped them of their righteousness, leaving them naked in sin, leaving them not half dead, but spiritually blind, dead, and an enemy of God. Adam now hides from God, and he also blames uh, God and his wife Eve for his problems. Unfortunately, Adam and Eve's children were affected with the fall into sin. We are infected with the fall into sin. And so in due time, Cain broke the fifth commandment. He killed his brother. Cain took the life of Abel with an unjust cause. Psalm 10 says, The wicked man sits in ambush in the villages. In hiding places, he murders the innocent. In the parable of the Good Samaritan that we heard earlier, we learn that the robbers who attacked this man going from uh, Jerusalem to Jericho the robbers broke the fifth commandment. They stripped this man, beat, beat him, departed, leaving him half dead. Same thing happened in Genesis 37. Joseph's brothers wanted to kill Joseph, but they threw him into a pit, and eventually they sold him to some slave traders on their way to Egypt. Ephesians 4 says... Let all bitterness and wrath and anger and clamor and slander be a put, a, put away from you along with all malice. In the parable of the Good Samaritan that we learned, re, heard earlier, we also learned that the priest and Levite broke the fifth commandment. They neglected to assist the man half dead. They should have helped the man, 
no matter how busy they were. In the parable of the sheep and the goats, Jesus said to those on his left, For I was hungry, and you gave me no food. I was thirsty, and you gave me no drink. I was a stranger, and you did not welcome me. Naked, and you did not clothe me. Sick and in prison, and you did not visit me. In the parable of the Good Samaritan we heard earlier, we also learned that the lawyer broke the fifth commandment. He harbored anger and hatred in his heart against others. So when the lawyer asked Jesus, who is my neighbor, he was hoping that Jesus would give a list of people who were excluded from being loved, such as Gentiles, Samaritans, or tax collectors, and that love toward the neighbor would only include those who are pure and holy. Furthermore, the lawyer harbored anger and hatred in his heart against Jesus himself. The lawyer saw Jesus as a fraud and not the Son of God. Therefore, the lawyer sought to test Jesus. In the Sermon on the Mount, Jesus defines the fifth commandment not merely and only as committing physical murder, but also committing anger and hatred in the heart. Furthermore, in the fifth commandment, God forbids aborting the life of an unborn child, acting violently or abusively toward a child or a spouse, engaging in reckless and self-destructive behavior like substance abuse. God forbids hating, despising, or slandering other groups of people, no matter their ethnicity, their wealth, or color. Who is our neighbor? Everyone is our neighbor. And God loves and cares for everyone, and he calls us to do the same in the fifth commandment. When we look at the first commandment, or the fifth commandment, or all of them, we learn that none of us are righteous, no, not one, for all have sinned and fall short of the glory of God. The law is like a mirror which shows us our sin, and as poor, miserable sinners, we all cry out, Lord, have mercy. Because of our sin, we're like the man in the parable that's half dead. Satan has stripped us of our righteousness leaving us naked in sin. Satan has wounded us with death, leaving us unable to find our way back to the fold like a lost lamb. Satan has left us spiritually blind, dead, and an enemy of God. We need a good Samaritan. We need a Savior. Jesus' mercy and compassion upon us poor sinners are seen when he came down from heaven to be our Savior. He took upon flesh like us. He's our brother. He's our neighbor. Jesus fulfilled the fifth commandment. He always spoke the truth in love. He came to the aid and defended the adulterous yet repentant woman. He treated one another with kindness and compassion. He gave sight to the blind, hearing to the deaf, and he even raised the dead. Jesus fulfilled the whole law in our place. He truly loved, also he also truly loved his father in heaven. And he also loved his neighbor, even those who hated him. Jesus was the perfect priest. He didn't walk past us, but he saw us injured by Satan, and he came to our compassion. He furthermore is the perfect sacrifice, offering himself on the cross as a payment for the sin of the whole world. So he is both priest and sacrifice, the Lamb of God, who has come to take away the sin of the world. 
And there he died upon the cross in your place on, and, and, on, and on our behalf. He atoned for the sin of the whole world. He appeased the wrath of God. He has reconciled us with our heavenly father. And three days later, he rose from the dead and he lives forevermore. In our holy gospel for today, we learn that the Samaritan has compassion on the man who is half dead. He put oil and, wo oil and wine on the wounds. He bandaged the wounds, put the poor man on, on his animal, brought the, brought the man to an inn. He paid for any expenses they were, and he, and he left money, and he said he would pay, if there, pay more if there's any other expenses. We can see a love and compassion for the neighbor. Dearly beloved in the Lord, Jesus is your good Samaritan. He came to you a lost lamb and picked you up. You were stripped of your righteousness, beaten and wounded in transgressions and sin. Jesus had compassion upon you. He poured the healing balm of his forgiveness into your womb, wound. He brought you to the church. Your sins were washed away in the waters of holy baptism. Your sins are pardoned and forgiven because of the death and resurrection of Christ. Jesus said to his disciples, blessed are, are you because prophets and kings desire to see what you see and to hear what you hear, but they were not able to. So also for you here this morning, you are blessed because your ear hears the absolving word. Your ear hears the word of God read and preached. Blessed are you for your eyes of faith see Christ as your savior. Blessed are you because your ears hear the life-giving words of our Lord. Blessed are you because your mouth receives the body and blood of Christ for the forgiveness of all your sin. Jesus has given you the riches of his grace. He takes care of you. And if there was ever anyone who was truly your neighbor, it is Jesus who lay down his life for you in order to save you. Again, God is the author of life. And every human life is precious to him. And through his gospel, he gives us freely the gift of eternal life. You receive mercy from God. And then you show mercy toward others. God loves you and he forgives you. And then you freely love and forgive one another. God has been good and merciful to you. And then you show goodness and mercy toward others. You reflect the love of God toward you in Christ Jesus. And you come to the aid of a family member, a friend, a church member or a friend, you reflect the love of God toward you in Christ Jesus when you speak in a way that helps and defends your neighbor and when you treat him or her with kindness and compassion. Ephesians chapter four says, be kind to one another, tender hearted, forgiving one another as God in Christ forgave you. By God's grace and mercy, may we never hurt or harm others in their bodily life and may God give us hearts of mercy to help and support others in their physical need. After we receive the Lord's Supper today, there is a prayer of thanksgiving. And we pray that God would not only strengthen our faith uh, toward him, but he also, we also pray that he would help us to love one another. God is the author of life. He gave you life. And he gives life to everyone. Every human life is important to God. Even the poor and the rich. The sick and the healthy. The young and the old. Christ died for you. And he forgives you all your sin. But Christ also died for the whole world as well. Through his precious gospel. He gives us the gift of eternal life. Not by what we do. Or not by the law. But freely. By grace through faith in Christ alone. Thanks be to God. Amen. Now may the peace of God, which passes all to understanding, keep our hearts and minds in Christ Jesus and the life everlasting. Amen.
in our prayers today. We include a prayer of sympathy to the family of Reverend Henry Weed, who died last week. Reverend Weed is uncle to Matt Weed. We also remember in our prayers um, Jim Beadle. Jim will have heart surgery this Tuesday. Let us pray. Lord God, Heavenly Father, in your deep compassion, you rescued us from sin, death, and the devil by sending your only begotten Son. Teach us to love you above all things and to love our neighbor as ourselves. Help us to serve the sick and those in need and to bring relief to the suffering, comfort to the sorrowing, and peace to the dying. Lord, in your mercy. Almighty, merciful, and most gracious God and Father, we implore you to turn the hearts of those who have forsaken the faith once delivered to your church and wandered from it. Mercifully visit them and turn them again that they may take pleasure in your word and be made wise to salvation through faith in Christ. Lord, in your mercy. Yeah. Almighty God, you send your Holy Spirit into our hearts that he may rule and direct us according to your will. Comfort us in all our temptations and afflictions. Defend us from all error and lead us into all truth that we being steadfast in faith may walk in the light of your truth and in the end obtain everlasting life. Lord, in your mercy. Heavenly Father, mercifully bless our Sunday school and our catechism classes. Strengthen the parents of our congregation that they may faithfully bring up their children in the nurture and instruction of your word. Give joy, wisdom, and strength to all who serve as teachers. Incline those who learn to godliness and obedience that they may know your eternal truth and trust in you all the days of their lives. Lord, in your mercy. Amen. Almighty God and gracious Father, bless those in our congregation who are homebound. Continue to bring them your gospel and sacrament. Care for them and protect them. In the midst of weakness, anxiety, or loneliness, grant them an increase of faith in your loving kindness. Lord, in your mercy. Gracious Lord, you are the great physician of both body and soul. Look with compassion on Jim, Greg, Teresa, Darlene, and Dempsey. If it be your will, give them a full restoration to health and strength. In the midst of these difficulties, keep them firm in their faith and trust in you that they never doubt your love and care for them. Lord, in your mercy. Lord God, maker of heaven and earth and giver of life, we thank you for all the mercies you granted to Henry Weed during his earthly life, especially for calling him to faith in Jesus. Comfort the survivors who mourn his death with the hope of the glorious resurrection and a joyful reunion in heaven. Lord, in your mercy. Yeah. Heavenly Father, as your Son invited all who labor and are burdened to come to him for rest, now grant the peace of sins forgiven to your people who come before you in the sacrament of your Son's body and blood. Preserve them from impenitence and unbelief that no one may take the sacrament for judgment. Cover them with the robe of Christ's righteousness, strengthen their faith, increase their love and hope, and in the end, seat them at your heavenly table to enjoy your goodness forever. Lord, in your mercy. Into your hands, O Lord, we commend all for whom we pray, trusting in your mercy through your Son, Jesus Christ, our Lord.
the Lord be with you. Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks unto the Lord our God. It is truly good, right, and salutary that we should at all times and in all places give thanks to you, Holy Lord, Almighty Father, everlasting God, through Jesus Christ our Lord, who, having created all things, took on human flesh and was born of the Virgin Mary. For our sake he died on the cross and rose from the dead to put an end to death thus fulfilling your will and gaining for you a holy people. Therefore, with angels and archangels, and with all the company of heaven, we laud and magnify your glorious name, evermore praising you and saying, Hallowed be thy name, thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. Our Lord Jesus Christ, on the night when he was betrayed, took bread. And when he had given thanks, he broke it and gave it to the disciples and said, Take, eat, this is my body, which is given for you, this do in remembrance of me. In the same way also he took the cup after supper, and when he had given thanks, he gave it to them, saying, Drink of it, all of you. This cup is the New Testament in my blood, which is shed for you for the forgiveness of sins. This do as often as you drink it in remembrance of me. The peace of the Lord be with you always.
thanks unto the Lord, for he is good. Let us pray. We give thanks to you, almighty God, that you have refreshed us through this salutary gift. And we implore you that of your mercy you would strengthen us through the same, in faith toward you and in fervent love toward one another. Through Jesus Christ, your Son, our Lord, who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. The Lord be with you. Bless we the Lord. The Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord make his face shine upon you and be gracious unto you. The Lord lift up his countenance upon you and give you peace. Amen. 